Hi there, whether you're switching from Billbox to Bolt or Bolt to Billbox, or even if you're looking into no code options, this video is for you. On this channel, I already made over 80 videos on Billbox and about the same amount on Bolt. In one of the videos, I showed how you can go from Billbox to Unity, but in that video, I was focusing more on the assets and the game object comparison. I'll put the link to that video at the end. But in this video, I want to compare the no code solution. So the actual programming part of both of the engines. In Billbox, you do the programming of your game in what's called a node map. And in Unity Bolt, you use what's called a graph. Both of them have these visual blocks and Bolt, we call them units. And in Billbox, we'll call them nodes. Now, the most important thing that you need to know is the difference between the connections. So in Billbox, we have these connections that we can drag from one point to another. And those connections are a little bit different than what we have in Unity Bolt. So what is the difference? Let's start with Billbox. In Billbox, when you make a connection, you're passing a signal with some data. So in case of a start node from created, we actually get a true signal that get passed into the 3D model. And that value of true enables that 3D model. In both the data and the flow are separated. So you can see that there's two types of connection. There's a triangle, which is the flow, and it just shows the flow of your program. And then you have the circular connections, which are the data. So that's the biggest difference. In both, you connect your data separate from the flow. There are also other differences in the connections, which I'll mention a little bit later. But for now, let's look at an example. So what I'm going to try to do now is move an asset with Billbox and then do the same thing with Bolt. In Billbox, you have all of your nodes right here and you can search for it. We can look for move and we have the node move. We can enable that move on create it. So we create this connection. And right here on the right, we can switch the speed of our move node. For instance, let's set Y to five. Now I can click play and you can see that that cube is moving up. So that was pretty simple. That's how you can make it in Billbox. Now let's go and try to do the same thing in Bolt. In Bolt, we can see that we start with two units, a start event and an update event. And I'll be using an update event. I'll give more information about it a little bit later, but let's just do a simple task. For us to move an object in Unity, we can use the translate unit. And for our translation data input, we can pass in a per second value because the speed is defined distance over time. So that's why we want to use the per second unit. Let's set it to five. And now we can go back here, click play, and we can see the same movement of our cube moving up. Now, right away, you might think, well, that per second unit, that's just extra things that you have to do to get the move to work. But that's actually one of the problems with Billbox. In Billbox, the speed is actually not calculated per second, and that creates problems once your frame rate drops. So in Billbox right now, if the frame rate of your game drops, then your game is going to slow down. Whereas when we use in per second unit in Bolt, it actually keeps the same speed of our cube. So that is one thing to keep in mind. Now the cube that I was just moving, it has physics turned off. The way you can enable physics in Billbox is just by selecting start. And right here we have a physics option and selecting dynamic. And the logic inside of the move node actually switches if you have dynamic physics. So if click play right now, everything works like it did before. There's still going to be the problem with slowdown in the game when the frame rate goes down. But other than that, it works. Now in Bolt to turn on physics, we have to go to our game objects inspector and make sure we have a rigid body. So the rigid body is responsible for dynamic physics in Unity. We can now go back to add a graph. And in the graph, if we are using dynamic physics, we have to change how we move the cube. It's nothing difficult. So all you have to do is find that rigid body and then set the velocity. Right there, we have the unit. And for the velocity, we can just pass five. And that's it. That's all we had to do to get our move to work with a dynamic physics. Now, if you want to make a move node just like you have in Billbox, 
you can and I actually went ahead and made one. So right here I have a move unit and in here I can pass in the speed that I want my object to be moving. And now with the logic that I have inside of this unit, it doesn't matter if you have dynamic physics or there is no physics at all, the move is still going to work because of the logic that is inside here. So this is called a super unit and it has the logic for checking if it has dynamic physics or not and switches which method to use. We can take a look inside here and the inside of that super unit is also visual scripting and you can see that right there per second translate and the set velocity the other part right here is the check that i'm doing to see if it's dynamic physics or not that is one of the benefits of bolt you can make your own super units with using other units in buildbox we don't have that option if you want to create your own node you're going to have to go and write some code and the check for physics in this move node is right here, if anyone is actually interested. There are other options that we have here for this move node. That's why there's lots of code here. Now I said that I'm going to mention something about the update. So right here in this move node, you can see that we have update right there. If you try to modify any of the build box units, you'll be familiar with that. And the update is the loop that it goes through every frame. Then we have the single input, which is triggered when we get an input on the connection and also we have another one which is in it similar to this structure is what's going on in bold graph so right here this start is same as what we have here the init then we have the update and this is the update that we have here and the signal is actually the connections that we have here with an option of passing data as well so that is really short on that and one more thing that i want to mention is the fact that buildbox has an option of connecting multiple connections from one source so right here you can see that we have two things connected to create it now in some cases it actually creates a problem because you're not in control of which of these nodes gonna execute it logic first the name for this problem is called a race condition if anyone is interested to look that up so a common way to work around with that in a build box is actually using a delay node so that you can control the flow that way but in bolt you're actually limited to have only one output if you need more than one source the way you do that is by using a sequence and in here you can input as much sources as you want but the benefit of using a sequence is that you control the order of the execution in your graph. So that's just one quick thing that I decided to mention as well. I hope this video helped out someone that is looking into this node code comparison. And if you want me to cover more of this comparison between Bolt and Buildbox, be sure to leave that in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.